My name is Dr. Robert Fisher. I'm director of the Stanford Epilepsy Center, and we're here today to talk about seizures and driving. The answer is sometimes. It depends. People with epilepsy have about a 50% increased risk overall of having seizures. But that risk is relatively smaller than the risk of old people who drive who might have cardiac events at the wheel or teenage boys who have a much higher risk. In fact, the accident rate in the United States for women with epilepsy is overall lower than for men without epilepsy. Therefore, it can be a form of discrimination, making it so that nobody with seizures drives. However, people whose seizures are not in control shouldn't be driving. If people have had a seizure within the preceding three months, they're probably not in control and should not be behind the wheel. However, I should say that this is not for the person with epilepsy or the physician to decide. We just recommend it's for the states to decide. Sometimes a person with seizures that are not completely in control may be able to drive if they meet some other criteria. For example, a few people have prolonged and consistent warnings and that may enable them to pull over to the side of the road. Other people will just have seizures during sleep and may never have a seizure during wakefulness. They may be cleared to drive even if their seizures are not in complete control and other people only have mild seizures, tingling, brief twitching, funny feelings that really do not interfere with driving there's an opportunity for physicians to write exceptions that can be considered by the DMV. The saying about driving, for example, without your seatbelt is that most accidents occur within short distances of home. Same is true for seizures. I think you'd be as likely to crash on short trips as on long trips. If I were having an aura right now, I would immediately start braking the car, look around to see that I was safe, and pull over to the quickest place I could and park the car. I'd then just stay in the car until the seizure was over. If you feel a seizure coming on when you're in the middle of heavy traffic and you can't safely get over, for example, if you're in the left lane or a middle lane of a freeway or on the San Mateo Bridge, just stop. Let the other traffic move around you, and in that circumstance, please don't get out of the car. Just remain in the car until help comes. But don't drive when you're in a pre-seizure, seizure, or post-seizure confusion state. Losing your license from seizures, first of all, doesn't generally mean taking the license physically away. It's usually a computer suspension on your record, but if it happens, you should not be driving. You then would, at the end of time that it was medically suspended, contact the DMV, let them know there have been no more seizures, and get a notice of unsuspension put on your computer record. If you feel that the license has been suspended unfairly, then you can ask for a special hearing under the DMV rules and laws to have that considered. California is one of the six states that has a required reporting law. It's something that most physicians, including me, don't agree with, but it means that we are obliged to report to the health department anyone who's had a loss of consciousness disorder or seizure in the preceding three years. It's not a person's physician who decides whether or not they drive. It's the state authorities that decide. The doctor just gives 
best medical advice. Driving is a very important issue in the United States. Not only is it convenience and recreation and getting to work or to school, it's freedom. Not being able to drive is a restriction on freedom. This is a major social disabling factor for people with epilepsy, and we all wish that we could find some way around it.